In this series of videos, we will review the basics of radiation biology, including how ionizing radiation affects cells and the overall organism. In this first video, we will introduce concepts related to radiation biology by first listing out the basic composition of the human body. Next, we will differentiate between somatic and genetic cells. We will then review the basic steps of mitosis and meiosis. We will also categorize types of cells and lastly, we will summarize the law of Bergoni and Tribondeau and discuss cell radiosensitivity. Before we dive into the effects of radiation on human cells, I want to take a few minutes and review some basics about the human body. You already know that the tissues of the body are made up of cells, the functional building blocks of the body. And these cells are made up of organelles or cell parts. And the organelles are made up of macromolecules which can be broken down into smaller molecules, which again can be broken down into atoms. Atoms are made up of subatomic particles such as protons, neutrons, and electrons. And you also know that atoms are affected by ionizing radiation through a process called ionization. Ionization occurs when radiation has enough energy to chemically change the atom by removing or displacing an electron. We should also review basic body composition. The human body is composed of 15% proteins, 2% lipids or fats, 1% carbohydrates, and 1% nucleic acids. The other 80% of your body is water. This is important to know, but I'll tell you why later. First, I want to review the types of living cells within your body. Human cells are divided into two main groups somatic cells and genetic cells. Somatic cells form the body of a multicellular organism. They are responsible for the organism's function and structure. Somatic cells contain two sets of chromosomes, one set from each parent. This means that each cell has 23 pairs of chromosomes, or 46 total chromosomes. We know that cells divide, and in order for a somatic cell to divide, they undergo mitosis, which is replication division. This means that at the end of the division, two identical daughter cells are created from one parent cell. Genetic cells, on the other hand, are for reproduction. Genetic cells are also referred to as gametes or sex cells, and in humans we know them as sperm or ovum. Genetic cells also undergo replication division or mitosis, but it doesn't stop there. The genetic cell also undergoes a division called reduction division or meiosis. And what this does is allows for the resulting four daughter cells to each have half of the typical cell's chromosomes. So 23 total chromosomes as compared to 46 total chromosomes of a somatic cell. Let's just break that down again um, and take a look at that. Mitosis and meiosis start out very much the same, so let's quickly review the phases and what takes place in each. They both undergo replication division, which starts with interphase, which is the phase in which the chromosomes replicate. Interphase can be broken down further into three stages, which are G1, where G stands for gap, and in this stage the organelle replicate, but not the DNA. The S stage, which is the DNA synthesis stage, and the G2, where the cell begins the preparation for cell division. You should know that the beginning of the S stage is when the cell is most sensitive to ionizing radiation throughout the entire cell's life cycle. After interphase is complete comes prophase. The nucleus swells and the chromosomes become paired chromatids. The next stage is the metaphase, where the chromosomes are able to be seen under a microscope and the chromosomes move to the middle of the cell. You should also note that metaphase is the phase where the chromosomes are most at risk to damage from radiation exposure, only second in sensitivity to the S stage. From here we have anaphase, where the chromosomes split and there are now two replicas of the genetic information. And lastly, there's telophase, where the nuclear membrane dissolves while the cell splits into two identical daughter cells. A new nuclear membrane forms around each new nuclei, and this is termed cytokinesis. Mitosis is complete, but we are not quite finished with meiosis, so let's take a look at that. In mitosis, in the first portion of meiosis, 
The parent cells start with 46 chromosomes, and the resulting daughter cells each have 46 chromosomes. In meiosis, the daughter cells divide again, but skip the S phase, where the chromosomes are replicated. This results in four gametes that have only 23 chromosomes, half of what a somatic cell has. This second division is called reduction division. The reason I review the phases of cell division is so you are able to understand which phases of the division process put the cell at the greatest risk for radiation damage. So again, the cell is most sensitive to radiation during the beginning of the S phase, which is in the interphase. This is when DNA is replicating. Metaphase is the second most sensitive time of the cell's cycle. This is the mitotic phase, when the chromosomes move to the middle of the cell's nucleus. During metaphase, the chromosomes are visible under a microscope and damage from radiation can actually be observed as structural changes in the chromosomes. These are mutations. There are four main types of cells, including epithelial, or skin cells, osteocytes, or bone cells, neurons, which are nerve cells, and urethrocytes, which are blood cells. Blood cells can be broken down into red and white. Urethro is red, and leuco is white blood cells. Each type of cell can be broken down further. There are variations of cells that generate the type of cell and those that destroy that type of cell. Those that destroy have the suffix class behind them. Those that generate that type of cell have the suffix blast at the end. So, for example, blood cells that break down other worn out blood cells are called urethroclasts, and blood cells that generate other blood cells are called urethroblasts. Which do you think is more sensitive to radiation? Cells ending in blast are typically more sensitive to radiation. Now that we've reviewed cell types and cell division, I want to better explain the generalizations that give guidance to which cells are most susceptible to damage from radiation. The first to describe radiosensitivity were two scientists named Bergoni and Tribendo. Back in 1906, these Frenchmen characterized cells that are more likely to be affected by radiation. In their revolutionary law, it was stated that radiosensitivity of cells is proportional to the rate of cell proliferation, which is the process of a single cell or group of cells to reproduce and multiply in numbers. Simply stated, this means that cells that replicate more will be more affected by radiation exposure. It is also stated in their law that the level of cell specialization also known as cell differentiation, affects the radiosensitivity of the cell. As a cell matures, it changes into different cell types, and as this occurs, they tend to become more differentiated. We just reviewed types of cells, and those that are more specialized in order to perform a specific function are considered highly differentiated. Cells that are less highly differentiated are more sensitive to radiation. Cells that are highly differentiated, such as nerve cells, are more resistant to radiation. The reason law is in quotation marks is because there are some exceptions to what Bergoni and Trivendo proposed over a century ago. While most of what they stated has stood the test of time, we have to discuss the exceptions. One example is the female gamete, or oocyte. The egg cell does not reproduce, and yet it is very radiosensitive. I mentioned earlier that blast cells or stem cells are radiosensitive, and they fall into the rules outlined by Bergoni and Tribendo. A developing embryo also abides by the rules. It is rapidly dividing, and the cells are undifferentiated or primitive. This is how I remember the rules of the law. An embryo is easy to recall that it is sensitive to radiation. It divides rapidly, and it is made up of primitive cells. An embryo is about 10 times more sensitive to radiation than an adult. I want to take a moment and discuss cell types of the human body and where they fall on the spectrum of radiosensitivity. Cells are typically categorized by their maturity and function. Bagoni and Tribendo noted that these also help to categorize the cell's radiosensitivity. Starting at the most sensitive cells of the human body, we have a lymphocyte. A lymphocyte is a subtype of white blood cell and the main type of cell found in lymph. 
spermatogonia are the undifferentiated male germ cells, so basically a stem cell that has not undergone meiosis yet. These cells are the most primitive of the sperm cells. Urethroblasts are also highly sensitive to radiation. They are immature red blood cells, so basically primitive cells with high proliferation or cell division. Intestinal crypt cells also make the list for being highly sensitive to radiation and are small intestinal stem cells. We then have an intermediate grouping of radiosensitivity and first on the list is endothelial cells. These are the cells that line the internal surface of blood vessels and lymph vessels. Next we have osteoblasts, which are cells that help form bones. If you recall, I said that blast cells tend to be more sensitive. Spermatids are young sperm cells that haven't quite matured yet. Next we have fibroblasts, which produce collagen and other connective fibers. Notice that blast suffix. The last cell we will talk about in this category is the granulosa cells. These cells help develop the female gamete or egg cell. In the low sensitive to radiation category, we have muscle cells and nerve cells. Both are highly differentiated, meaning they are unique in design and function. Take for example a neuron. We already have identified this cell as highly differentiated mature cell. As a result, this type of cell is not as radiosensitive as other cells in the human body. All this talk about radiosensitivity, but what does it really mean? What are we really worried about? What happens to cells when radiation interacts with them? We will go into this in greater detail in the next video, but for now let's just review the three potential outcomes from when a cell is irradiated with ionizing radiation. The cell can repair radiation damage. Ionized atoms can once again become neutral by attracting a free electron. Additionally, cells can repair themselves using repair enzymes. The next option is cell death. A cell may not be able to repair itself and basically commits cell suicide. This isn't necessarily a bad thing as our bodies can produce more cells to replace the dead cells. Our bodies do this all the time. The last effect is mutation of a cell's genetic blueprint, or DNA. These mutations can be the starting point of cancer when a somatic cell is involved or a heritable change that has passed through a gamete cell. The response of the cell depends on a number of factors. This includes the amount of radiation, but also where the cell is within its cell cycle and the type of cell. And lastly, as we will soon learn, where the cell is damaged.